Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process, identify your unique talents and set fire to your talents for serving mankind. In the last lecture, we basically uh, derived uh, you know various relationship for one dimensional combustion wave. In the process, we derived two important relationship, one is the Rankine relationship, other is rankine huguenot relationship. And we will be using those relationships and trying to understand the various regimes of the deflagration and detonation. In other words, when the detonation can occur, when the deflagration will occur, that we will be discussing about. So, let us now invoke uh, basically uh, the Rankine uh, Huguenot relationship. If you recall that we had derived this Rankine Huguenot relationship, this is Q is equal to gamma, gamma minus 1, P2 by rho 2 minus P1 by rho 2 of P2 minus P1 into 1 minus rho 1 plus 1 minus rho 2. And this is basically the Rankine Huguenot relationship. And if you uh, look at if I take this Q as 0, right, for example, if I take zero and if I plot this P2 versus the 1 over rho 2 for a particular P1 and rho 1 right I will get a relationship relationship like this that is I am plotting P2 1 over rho 2 and for a particular P1 and rho 1 right. So, you will get a relationship and this is for a particular this is your basically P 1 and 1 over rho 1 this is this region and this is Q corresponding to q is equal to 0 and this is uh, is corresponding to normal shock wave because this is one dimensional so therefore it is corresponding to one second. but if it is q is greater than 0 that means some finite value then naturally what will happen there will be another curve will be it will be coming. Now, if I take consider this as my initial point then it will be like this, this is my uh, initial point. So, what will happen let us see and this will be And I can consider this as a this is the point I can say this is a basically A and this is your B and this region is goes towards you know very high values right this goes towards infinity kind of thing. If I consider this case as A and B right and there will be other regions. Let us now invoke our uh, relationship what we had derived 
for um, the velocity right v 1 square we know that is nothing but a p 2 minus p 1 rho 1 1 minus rho 1 by rho 2 is not it this is the one we derived right. Now, if I consider this as a p 1 and this is also this correspond to p 2. So, p 1 and p 2 is same is not it at the point b at point b what is happening at point b what is happening p 2 is equal to p 1 or not. So, this is your p 1 to start with initial right, but p 2 is here. So, therefore, p 2 is same as the p 1 because the same line straight line ok. That means, this expression the v 1 then what it will be v 1 will be 0 right. So, therefore, it is basically if it is uh, 0 then what will be v 2 then v 2 also will be 0 yes or no right. Why because v 2 square we can write down p 2 minus p 1 rho 2 uh, rho 2 by rho 1 minus 1 right. So, which is not possible yes or no is it possible no na. So, similarly if you look at at point A what it would be point A m 1 because point A what happened rho 1 is equal to rho 2 yes or no because the same point na, right the rho 1 and rho 2 this is corresponding to what this point corresponding to rho 2 right and this is corresponding to rho 1. So, both are same. So, therefore, v 1 will be infinity. So, also m 1 will be infinity and what will be the m 2? m 2 will be also infinity yes or no. So, therefore, this is not possible that means, in between it will be impossible. Of course, there is another way of also looking at you will find out this will be negative you know of uh, the square. So, therefore, it cannot be. So, this is not possible that means, only this region is possible if you look at here what is happening p 2 in this case anywhere here what is happening at this point p 2 is very high values let us say this point somewhere p 2 is very high values. So, you can say that uh, when p 2 is tending towards infinity what will happen to v 2 or what happened to v 1? v 1 also will be tending towards infinity for a particular finite density right. If v 1 p 2 is then means v 1 will be tending towards infinity where this region right because this is very high values as compared to p 1 are you getting. So, therefore, that also will be infinity and in the similar way you can say at this region like p 2 will be very very small right and you can also find out that this will be very low velocities very very p 2 when is tending towards or rather I can put other way around arguments right that is in this case what is happening rho 2 or the uh, rho 2 is tending towards what very very larger value means rho 2 is tending towards very small rho 2 is tending towards 0 this side yes or no 
this side 1 by rho 2 is very high value 1 by rho 2 is tending towards infinity means what rho 2 is 0 tending towards 0 right if it is there then what will happen to v 1 rho 2 is infinity right that means if it is this will be 0 so there will be some finite values right that means rho 1 will be having some velocity and p 2 uh, p 2 is also smaller right it is going towards that so that v 1 will be will be smaller right so v or m 1 will be tending towards smaller means tending towards 0 and m 2 tending towards infinity which is really not possible because you cannot have m 1 is 0 and the m 2 will be in very high values is not possible. So, therefore, certain region it is not really possible right. So, this will be uh, not uh, will be considered. So, what we will do now we will be looking at basically a Rayleigh relationship now by considering relation we can get minus p 1 1 over rho 1 minus 1 over rho 2. So, if I plot this thing p 2 versus from this relationship I can have basically plot p 2 versus the 1 over rho 2 for a particular value of mass flux rate for a fixed mass flux rate p 2 versus 1 by rho 2 what it would be it will basically a straight line is not it yes or no it is a linear right. So, therefore, uh, what I will say if I will and it will be trying to intersect this Huguenot curve this is known as Huguenot curve right because this is I have, uh, we have discussed from the uh, Rankine Huguenot curves right. So, if I will do that what will it will start from here right and it will be a straight line right it will be kind of things and and this line is known as Rayleigh line and this point whichever will be tangent this will be tangent to the Huguenot curve that is known as the upper this is the upper one there is a lower upper one here we call this as a upper uh, Chapman Joget line point. This is known as basically uh, in short form you can say the C j. Similarly, there will be another point here, this is known as lower. C j point, C j means Chapman Joget uh, point right and this will be having a velocity right which will be uh, corresponding to the this Huguenot curve and keep in mind that this will be very high velocity this is detonation and this is this portion from here to there that region is known as the deflagration and uh, keep in mind that this uh, in the normal shock wave generally uh, this portion will be uh, not possible due to the violation of second law of thermodynamics.
and uh, because the entropy will be will be decreasing lower branch is not possible and what we will be looking at now we will be looking at this portion from a to this region and b to this region and see that where it will be possible and various regime will be discussing about so as i told just to make it uh, very clear that when you uh, this Huguenot curves being plotted p2 versus 1 over rho 2 you will get that this curve which i had marked in the last slide as a a and this is your b right and this portion is physically impossible right and uh, this line is basically the Rayleigh line And as I told that uh, there will be various regimes here, the regime 1, regime 2, regime 3, regime 4 and regime 5 and this portion is uh, known as from this point because there is the tangent point x uh, between the Huguenot curve and the Rayleigh line is uh, basically known as the upper Chapman uh, Joget point and from here onwards is the strong detonation which is not really possible in nature whereas the weak detonation from a to this region and uh, from b to y is a weak deflagration and uh, y to l right this region right that is uh, y to kind of uh, you know you can say that uh, may be n and this I can say is m right y to n is a strong deflagration. Let us uh, look at the region 1, in the region 1 what is happen is the p 2 is far greater than the p u and p u is corresponding to this point like if it is let us say very very high right because this is this point I can call as basically P u and in this case what is happening uh, because uh, 1 by rho 2 will be less than 1 by rho 1 that means what that means rho 2 is greater than rho 1 yes or no right rho 2 is greater than the rho 1 and if it is case then you can look at what is happening to Mach number m 1 1 by gamma p 2 by p 1 minus 1 by 1 minus rho 1 by rho 2. So, if you look at basically this rho 2 is much higher than the rho 1 therefore, this will be very small this may be tending towards 0 if it is very very high right. So, therefore, uh, what happened the Mach number will be very high m 1 and what happened to m 2 this is square ok m 2 square is 1 over gamma and 1 minus p 1 by p 2 so m 2 square also will be very rho 2 is uh, very high as compared to rho 1 so therefore it will be also very high values and p 2 of course is a uh, very high values as compared to p 1 so therefore it will be 1 I am liking it will be higher value. So, so gas velocity related to well prawn is slowed to the subsonic speed and pressure density increases significantly that means p 2 rho 2 
right m1 tending towards m rarely observed you cannot really get the m1 the inlet velocity is being so high very very infinite towards end i am talking about here in this region from that onwards right so therefore uh, it is basically uh, not possible to have this region right rarely observed and region 2 this portion if you look at the pressure P2 is less than the pressure of Cj detonates point Pu and which is of course the weak detonation region and uh, the gas velocity related to wave front is slow to the subsonic speed in this region. So, therefore, it is really possible and the burnt gas velocity is greater than the speed of sound at isochoric process because isochoric means what the density is almost same as that in this region you know like if you look at in this region basically density is approximately same as that. So, therefore, it is uh, possible, but here it is going up very you know kind of things higher and weak detonation attends uh, you know at under these conditions that uh, you know attains infinity velocity. So, therefore, if this is not possible as we had seen earlier. Region 3 in this region is P 2 less than P 1 because P 2 if you look at in this region P 1 is here no no sorry this will be P 2 should be greater than P 1 and uh, therefore, the density 1 by rho 2 is here in this region actually there is a rho 1 and 1 by rho 2 is greater than 1 by rho 1 in this region it will be higher right. And therefore, uh, as it will m 1 in this region imaginary because if you look at this in this case rho 2 is um, smaller if it is smaller this will be very higher values as compared to 1. So, therefore, it is imaginary or physically impossible. So, region 4 So, this is uh, if you look at in between what is happening in this region the P 2 is lying between P L this is corresponding to P L right this correspond to P L and also the P 1 is P 1 is corresponding to this one right this portion. And gas velocity uh, related to wave front is accelerated right and uh, as a result what will happen this isobaric because um, process which will be taking place in this region there will not be much uh, change in the pressure if you look at between this and this region the pressure would not be changing much right although the P 2 is uh, less than uh, P 2 is less than P 1 and uh, the difference P 2 minus P 1 is uh, quite small. So, uh, therefore, it will be uh, really possible to have um, the deflagration weak deflagration occurs. The region in this case what is happening the density 1 over rho 2 is far greater than the rho 1 in this region from here to the strong wave which will be taking place in this region right. And whereas, the P 2 P 2 is uh, very less than the P 1 because P 1 is here and P 2 is very less. 
So, as a result what will happen the m 1 is quite small right and m 1 m 2 will be quite large which is impossible which is uh, not possible or not never possible in practice. Therefore, the strong deflagration is never possible in practice. Why? Because if the flow is super subsonic you know like uh, the initial state and then you cannot have a uh, sub, uh, supersonic flow without the formation of any shock wave. So, therefore, this is not really possible and the strong deflagration is impossible to occur in nature. And keep in mind that we will be basically discussing about the weak deflagration that means, the premixed flame is basically will be weak deflagration between this region actually this is not possible. So, in between this region you know which we will be discussing about similarly the weak detonation is possible and whether the strong detonation is not possible. Let me give you some values what is happening you know in case of deflagration and detonation. If you look at V 1 C 1 this is nothing but your what your Mach number 1 is very very low whereas, the detonation it will be 5 to 10 is very high unless it is beyond 4 or something detonation would not occur right. And V 2 by V 1 is 4 to 6 whereas, it is other way around that is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 just opposite of that. And P 2 by P 1 is 0 0.98 it is almost negligibly small you can say it is not changing 1 approximately equal to 1. And whereas, here the pressure is 15 to 55 kind of very high pressure across the uh, combustion wave and T 2 T 1 is 4 to 16 whereas, here it is much higher level and density of course, is a small change, but here it is other way around it is much higher 1.2276. So, this is the range I am giving so that you can see it is just opposite behavior you can see between the deflagration and detonation and detonation leads to the explosion and one has to avoid that. Of course, nowadays people are talking about pulse detonation engine using the detonation as an energy source you know uh, or enhancing the combustion process and then reduce the emission and also uh, you know have a engine, but it gives a lot of noise and that is a bigger hurdles for the development of pulse detonation engine. Thank you very much, we will take up an example in the next lecture to discuss about how to handle this detonation and deflagration in that. Thank you very much.